Hi, my name is Chase Schrader and behind me is my 2004 Subaru STI. If you guys have been around a long time, you know this car is the reason this channel exists. Because when we first got it, it was bone stock. And from this, we went ahead and modified the stock Subaru into what it is today, a daily drivable track car, also known as Project Daily on this channel. I decided since we did the Forester build walk around, we might as well do an STI build walk around because much like the Forester, this car is going to be seeing some major changes soon. So let's go ahead and take a look. And well, let's go ahead and start at the front. So as you guys can probably see, we have blacked out housings. These have HIDs. They actually don't work right now because of some wiring from the previous owner. So I have to run my other lights all the time. And then just a cheap eBay lip. This is the third or fourth one we've been through on this car because well, zip ties can only hold them so well. And when we used to winter drive this, that would come off all the time. I would like to upgrade that to a lip, a proper lip at some point, but that works for now. And then if we move a little bit farther back, we have our wheel and tire setup, which is one of the most iconic things about this car. As you can see, we have Toyo Proxy R1Rs. These are 255s because they are as wide as we'd go with an R compound. They actually do rub a little bit up in the front, but none at the rear with the fenders rolled. This allows for maximum traction when we are autocrossing. And then those tires are mounted to some roto wheels, the rota grids, I believe. And then finally, one other thing is we do have rally armor mud flaps. This was actually the first modification we ever did to this car, because as I said, I was winter driving this at one point. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the engine bay. Here in the engine bay, we got a lot going on and honestly, I'll probably forget some stuff. So if you guys are wondering, be sure to drop a comment down below, but we're going to go ahead and start from the front. So aftermarket aluminum rad, just because, well, the stock ones aren't the best. And then as we move back, you'll see we have a SPT intake as well as a Tomy intake here. So we have all those wonderful noises. I actually do not even have an aftermarket blow off valve and this car sounds absolutely amazing on diesel. And as we move a little bit farther back, you'll see we have an IAG street air oil separator. One of the big mods that I did is when I was when I had this engine out is we made sure to refresh everything and do some maintenance items. And that was one of them. Another thing you can see is it is still on the stock turbo, but I do have a heat blanket as well as an exhaust system. We'll probably talk about that exhaust system in the back, but it is a catless turbo back all the way back three inches um, and an NVIDIA system. And then as we move across, as I said, there's not much else besides just refreshments and some new silicone hoses. It also, on the other side, you might notice it has the old school WRX fuel filter. That is great for when we go upgrade the fuel lines and we go upgrade the fuel system. So a little bit of upgrade there. With that being said, we also just have an AEM fuel pump in here. This is just a little bit of upgrade from stock. Nothing too big because as I said, we're running stock turbo, so we can't really push it to the max. Other than that, stock injectors and a lot of just cleanup, like blacking out stuff, making sure everything is clean and that kind of stuff. That was a long process. If you guys want to check that out, there's a whole playlist of that on the channel. And another thing before we go ahead, you might notice at the start, we have the car sitting not super low, but a little bit low. That is because we're on BC BR series rate coilovers. Um, these are we've done really well. As you guys know, I autocross this car and for the budget that I was looking at, these are performing great. And well, as we move further back, you might notice I have a single wiper. I have no rationale besides I like the way it looks. Um, it kind of represents the old touring cars and that's kind of the look I went with. It is actually a part off my Forester that I went ahead and um, used a, the bigger wiper blade and moved it over. And then we can go ahead and talk about this. This is probably one of the more unique things on my car. It is a custom roof rack. So what has happened is we put metal brackets in here that mount to the Yakima towers and then that allows us to mount these right to the body. We don't have to use those little clips which are an absolute pain and allows us to mount stuff like my downhill bike on here with no issues. So with that being said then I do have the Yakima towers as well as the Yakima round bars just kind of keeping it period specific with the smaller I believe it's a 42 inch shroud and then a Yakima roof rack. And then as we move to the back of the car you're going to notice the mud flaps again as well as the tint that we have all the way around the car. It is 25% tint all the way around, but it's a nice ceramic stuff so I can see when I'm driving at night. And then if we move a little bit farther, you are gonna see the NVIDIA G200 exhaust with a resonator actually deleted and a three inch turbo 
back. So it allows us to have that nice Subaru rumble, but it isn't too drony on the highway, which is great. If you guys wanna hear that in action, I have a whole video of it comparing it against my friend Adrian's car that had a pretty much stock exhaust. You can go check that out up above. And then other than that, we just have a tow hook way back there. I've only used it a couple times um, and it just kind of clips onto the stock one and um, cr clamps down on it. It is, I think, a Blackworks Racing one. I don't even know if they, it's made anymore because as I said, that was one of the first modifications we did when we installed these wheels and tires. And then jumping in the interior, you're gonna notice quite a few things. So one of the biggest things here is my Defy or Defy, depending on you, how you say it, advanced gauges. These are 26 millimeters. I have fuel pressure, oil pressure, and oil temperature. And then I have my controller right here. Cause as I said, it's a daily drivable track car. So you don't need radio. I actually do have a Bluetooth receiver in here that runs to the speakers, but for controlling it, I don't need it. I need to access my gauges. So I have my gauge controller here as well as the power box here. And then Subarus, you, as you guys know, I gotta have my access port. This car is pro tuned on an access port. So I have all my gauges here and I have my pro tune on here. If you guys wanna go check out that video, that video is where we actually went ahead and as I said, changed the fuel pump because we had an issue where it wasn't supplying fuel pressure. Thankfully, these gauges actually let us know right away that we had that issue. So that was perfect. And then other than that, we don't have anything besides we've switched out all the LEDs in here from the green to the white and then same with it here. And as we go ahead and turn the key, you'll see that hear my radio start up as well as you'll see the gauges start to whine because the car isn't running. And well, that's not all in the interior. I do have a fire extinguisher mounted under my passenger seat here. But the big thing you're probably wondering is what is this? This is a wink mirror that was actually built for world track racing as well as they put it on golf course a lot of times. It, as I said, track focus build, race car focus build, allows me to see 180 degrees. You don't really actually even have to shoulder check on this car because you can see literally everything beside you and um, behind you. So it is a great addition, especially as we kind of start to build this car more towards a track oriented thing. Might have said exactly what I'm planning to do, but who knows. Another thing we did when we went ahead and we did the roof rack is we wrapped our roof in this Galaxy headliner. I have a couple videos on it if you want to go see that process, but I went ahead and wrapped it so it's not the gray. And then you might also notice that none of my interior plastics are gray. Much like the Forster, I've went ahead and blacked that out too. So the A pillars, B pillars, and the C pillars are all blacked out and any other black pieces of trim I went ahead and painted so that we had a pretty much all black interior. Thankfully, unlike the Forster, we don't have gray seats or anything, so it actually worked out really nice in this car. One other thing I forgot to mention when we were up front, because I see it all the time, is the extra fabric that came off this headliner actually went on to the plastic gray trim on my center console. So that's why it looks like Galaxy fabric on there. And well, that is pretty much my Subaru SCI. As I said, there's gonna be a lot of changes coming soon, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it as we kind of do the next phase of both of our builds. But, and if you guys are new, I would recommend subscribing so you don't miss any of that. But that is gonna be the end of today's video. So as always, peace out and stay humble.